Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pay Studio on the Road. We're here in Los Angeles at beautiful Hotel Cafe today with Jensen McRae. Jensen McRae, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's a very, very fitting uh, place for you to be performing. I know this place has a, a huge place in your heart and a part of your history. And so we're very happy to have you here. And we're about to share a lot of your music with the Internet. What's happening first today? The first song we're playing is my most recent single, Starting to Get to You, one of the more up-tempo ones for a, for a bit of a false start. Then it's going to get sad. <laughs> but um, this is Starting to Get to You. You're tough, so what? I've learned to take a punch, you don't break. But I do, I'm starting to get to you She took your crown, but she can't hurt you now I will lay my weapons down, I will lay my weapons down No, 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 I know you're scared But you will love me for a second there Look at what a heart can do I'm starting to get to you Starting to get to you Starting to get to you Low light, few words Some porch on 23rd Your warm, that's new I'm starting to get to you Do we drink too much before this? Won't know till it hits in the morning Loving you is habit forming Loving you is habit forming No, 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 I know you're scared But you love, love me for a second there Look at what a heart can do I'm starting to get to you Starting to get to you Starting to get to you Starting to, starting to, starting to get to you Starting to, starting to, starting to get to you Na 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 na, I know you're scared But you love me for a second there To get to you, starting to get to you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It sounds wonderful. The siren is right on time. I don't think Perfect. that's in the recording. Uh, you're right here on Cahuenga at Hollywood. Um, and this, so this place itself, the Hotel Cafe, played has played a big role in your your development as an artist. Can you talk a little bit about your history here and what this place has meant to you over the years? Yeah, it's um, it was one of the early, uh, Hotel Cafe was one of the very first venues that I started playing in when I was in college. I went to USC undergrad um, and studied music there. And um, at the end of my freshman year, I played a show on the second stage um, that by the time my turn came up, the only other people there were the other people on the bill and the bartender. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've played many shows since then, and we've come a very long way together. <laughs> we've come full circle. So now here yeah. we are in, in a venue with three people watching. Exactly. It's yeah. exa exactly what I said, full circle. This is about the population of my first show ever. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, we've got a good crowd of people on the internet watching right now. So even though they are difficult to visualize, there are a lot of happy people watching this right now. Great. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing the music. And um, and there's a lot of it. What's, uh, what's coming up second today? The next song I'm going to play um, is a single I put out a little over a year ago called Wolves. Um, it's about sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape culture. So some heavy topics. But just generally, uh, I wanted to tell kind of the story of how it feels to be a woman navigating the world, starting kind of in adolescence and how like the, the precautions that we have to take to keep ourselves safe persist the whole time that we're, that we're here. And uh, this is Wolves. I was 15 still in the valley Working in a parking garage 
first time I met a wolf in person At first I thought it was a dog Tried to dodge him, he was faster Than I'd ever had to be He smiled and howled in the same moment Thank you. It is, it's a, a heavy topic, an important topic, and uh, I mean, thankfully the conversation around that topic is happening more now than it was in years past. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we're always happy to use this platform to amplify the voices of, uh, you know, not, not only music, but when people are saying things that, uh, that are important to be said, we're happy to use this platform to amplify that. And it's, um, I mean, so you've, you've done your part as a songwriter and used your talent in order to spotlight that kind of behavior in a, you know, attempt to, to eradicate it, to stomp that sort of behavior out. Um, what do you think that we should be doing societally in order to highlight that behavior and, uh, and you know, and try to, to make sure that it doesn't happen any longer? I mean, those of us that don't have songwriting ability, <laughs> like what, what should we society, societally be doing about it? Um, I saw, I think it was a tweet today that was basically saying like, uh, I feel like cis straight men don't understand the power of just telling their friends like, hey man, that was messed up, like in casual social situations. So I feel like when people who are in, you know, positions of power just demographically, just acknowledge that things are going on around them that are not okay, that's a, real that's a real learning opportunity for their peers and the people who are in the same situation because it's one thing for someone like me to shout those injustices out, um, but it's another thing entirely when someone who's totally unaffected by those things takes the opportunity to just acknowledge that something has gone wrong. 
um, it's a very powerful thing. Um, and I think more people should, should give that a try, even though it's scary to go against the bros and go against the grain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it can be. It's difficult, but it's but it's important. Hopefully, that is, these con these conversations do progress, and it becomes more of a normal thing to yeah. uh, to to call it out when we see it. Um, we the next song that you're going to play right now is a is a much lighter song. Which, yeah. I mean, I know I know about the origin story of this song. I hope that you're not sick of telling the story, but it's so good how <laughs> this came to be. Can you uh, can you explain how? Uh, how you f this song exists and how it was birthed. I am not sick of telling the story at all. Um, basically, in the middle of January, I was thinking about, I was listening to Phoebe Bridgers' album Punisher a lot, and I was thinking about like the time in between the first and second album and how we'd probably get the next one in a few years, and it would definitely reference the pandemic more obliquely. Um, and I was thinking about how she would probably write, you know, the vaccination anthem of our time. So I drafted a tweet about how her song about hooking up in the car at the Dodger Stadium vaccination site would probably make me cry. And originally I wasn't gonna send it, but I sent the tweet to my friend and she said it was funny, so I tweeted it. And then before I knew it, it had gotten some traction and I decided to write the song myself. And then that got even more traction and within two days, two million people had watched me sing this fake song in my nightgown. So <laughs> I had to finish it and put it out for real. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, I would love to hear it, man. It's I've, I have been hearing it quite a bit. I've been listening to it almost nonstop for the last couple of weeks, and Thank uh, yeah, you. I'd love to hear it now. <laughs> but yeah, it's called Immune, uh, and it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Traffic from the east side got me aggravated. Harder than the day my brother graduated. Wait for hours in the sun In line at Dodger Stadium I'm not scared of dogs or getting vaccinated Lay the seat back, turn this place into a bed Someone smoking in the camera just ahead Yeah, I know the irony would never be lost on me You don't have to point it out again What will we say to each other When the needle goes in? And what will we be to each other If the world doesn't end?
viral sensation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we so we talked a little bit about this place, about Hotel Cafe, and what it's what it's meant to you. Um, and this question kind of piggybacks on that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the LA music community. I and mean, you've been here your whole life. You went to USC. Um, and can you talk about some of the artists that have been important to you, maybe supported you over the years, or artists who you in turn have supported? And uh, just the importance of of being a part of that community. There's so many artists that have been so important to me in the the LA songwriter community. And honestly, most of them I met at USC, like in the popular music program, Rhett Madison, Mazin, Noso, Kate Gron. I have another friend named Katie Crone, who I didn't meet at USC, but is also an LA native, an amazing singer songwriter. And like having this network of supportive women who all are working towards the same goal. We all went to go see each other's shows. We bounced voice memo demos off of each other. Um, has been so important to me. Like it was something that I never anticipated growing up. I didn't really have a lot of friends who were serious about music as a kid. So finding that like in early adulthood has been so, so valuable to me. Nice, good. Well, I'm glad that you found it. And then Ed, how have you found it to be over the last year when everything is, everything is more of a challenge, uh, keeping that community together? Like what kind of stuff have you been doing to, to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't sort of disintegrate like so many other things have? We've been uh, we've been finding creative ways to to play together. Um, the app Clubhouse has provided a great uh, location nice. for like spur of the moment open mics. Um, we all hop in on each other's like Instagram live streams. Um, but I think it's it's put like so much more importance on like the incubation and creation stage of music because we don't get that many opportunities to like take it out on the road. Um, and so we've all been like I think really pushing ourselves um, and each other like creatively. Um, as writers and, and really focusing on that aspect, that aspect of things while we have the time to do that. Because as soon as shows come back, it's gonna be, we're gonna be on the road a lot. Yeah, 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 <laughs> brand new. Our, our own version of the Roaring Twenties is Absolutely. maybe, maybe on the horizon. They certainly yes. hope so. Well, this has been a total pleasure so far and we're not done. There's still more music to be shared with the internet. What are you gonna do last today? My last song today um, is a song called Adam's Ribs. It's actually the first song that I ever wrote with my incredible producer, Rocky. It was our very first session together. Um, and he told me to just write as if he wasn't in the room. And so I wrote this th song that I thought was very odd, but um, he seemed to like quite a bit. Um, so this is Adam's Ribs. I tried to bargain not to get thrown from the garden too fast I fell to begging Have you ever lost heaven? Feel like the product of such a savage harvest You break it makes me blue It's like I'm made of you It's like I'm made of you I can't lose you yet to let you go Loving you is in my bones Something's gotta give Adam, will you claim me as your own? This heartbreak quietly Rewired me My world is ending now Don't tell me to calm down This love letter begins to add them from your ribs so called intelligent design without you I would die without you I would die I can't lose you yet I refuse to let you go
Jensen, thank you so much for coming and doing this. Uh, this is absolutely delightful. It was great to meet you, and thank you for sharing the, the music and the words behind it as well. Um, and we will keep an eye out for new music, right? The details are not um, crystal clear at the moment, but in a couple of months, there's going to be brand new Jensen McRae music, so we'll yes, certainly stay tuned. Yes, the crystal ball will clear up soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we will stay tuned for that, and um, I have no doubt that we're going to be crossing paths more, so uh, so I'll see you in, I don't know, a year or something. We can do this again, and yeah. stay, stay safe between now and then, and uh, thanks again for your time doing this. It's been great. Thank you so much.